Okay, so hey everyone, um, in this video we are going to be doing absolute value functions. So, we have the basic um, parent function, if you don't know what a parent function is, um, that's basically like, you know, like, kind of, um, It's for every x, so, you know, if you don't know, like, for the linear function, it would be x. For a quadratic function, it would be x squared. For a polynomial function, it would be, like, x to the n, where n is greater than 0, such that n is greater than 0. Um, for this one, though, it's not really, like... You know, it's not really any of these. Um, this one's the, called the absolute value function, where it has these two little lines um, on each side. So, if you um, if you know how it looks, so it's basically like a giant V. So. And I start with the absolute value function of x or, you know, because it's really important to know, especially when you're trying to see how it went from this to, like, let's say, you know, there's, there's questions I would ask you, like, f of x equals x, the absolute value of x, and then they would say g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1, and then it would ask you describe the transformation from f to g. Um, and that's why, you know, it's very important to know how to, how to graph this one, because it would tell you, it basically tells you to graph both. Um, or it would have one graph, and then you would have to graph the other one, you know. But, basically that's how it is. Um, but this one is basically like a giant V, so um, basically all you do is you go ahead and you do this and of course um, of course this keeps it keeps going but of course there's on depending on how long your graph is you know you don't have to do it too high um, but this is how it looks, and when you have to graph um, the the basic, you know, the the other one, it would ask you, okay, what's the what's the um, the transformation from f to g, and then you would say, you know, but we'll we'll go through that as we progress. Um, Let's see, so this is how it looks, and this is something that, and also, I'm going to also graph the other one. So the other one is, let's see, give me a second. The other one, the other one you do, let's see, give me one second, guys. So... So we know we have that one as the parent function, and we also have another one. Even though it's, um, I don't think I don't think it's a parent function because even though it is, you know, it is 
part of, you know, it's, it's X, but it's basically the negative part. So you know how you have f of x equals x, and then you have f of x, or rather um, g of x equals negative x. So we all know that that is this is how that this is how this one looks, and then this one looks like this. So. Um, we have to kind of differentiate, and that's why I'm basically going through these two before I actually start graphing the real absolute value functions. Um, and also, it's on CUDA software, and this is really good for worksheets if you want to do any worksheets. There's also worksheets on other websites, but this is, you know, kind of the reference that I usually go to for whenever I'm doing, you know, practicing any type of math. So, um, we have, we have the absolute value of x, and then we also have the negative absolute value of x. So this is like g of x equals negative the absolute value of x. And how this one looks is you still have a zero, zero right here. Um, one I think one, um, well, for the most part, for every parent function, for the most part, not for all of them, but for most of them, there's going to be um, a zero comma zero. I know for um, for ones like the um, the exponential function and logarithmic function. Um, don't they don't have a zero zero um but this one looks like this so it's the same thing but it's facing down and and so We have okay, hold on. Give me a second, guys. I'm like trying to I'm trying to see why my one note is acting really slow. I think it's because I didn't sign in. So yeah, for the absolute value function that's negative, you it basically looks like a <coughs> an upside down v. So that's kind of how I remember it. Um, and. And so we have something that goes like this. Um, and that's how that one looks. But of course, the basic formula for an absolute value function is this. So this is something that if you're watching this video and if you're doing absolute value functions in your class, like you have to remember this uh, this formula here because it's basically the um, 
um, kind of, I would say the vertex form, but it's, you know, it, it's basically the, the basic equation of an absolute value function. So let's see. So now we're going to go ahead and do graphing. So how I would do it. So basically, um, if you, one thing that we have to know is that with an absolute value function, and I think I'm going to go through this right now if I can. Um, basically, we have, let's see, give me a second. So if I look up, If I look up absolute value function um, on Google, basically it's it is basically um, the formula for that is basically a times the quantity or times the absolute value of x minus h, um, and then absolute value sine plus k. So, yeah, so this is how it looks. And this is basically, and also you can look at it as a piecewise function, um, but of course piecewise functions, those are more, you know, I wouldn't say they're algebra, because um, they're looked at more in either, I would, I mean, maybe they are algebra, but I know I looked at them when I was in pre-calculus, so we're going to go through that later, um, but for right now, we're just, we're not really going to focus on this part right here. Oops. We're not really going to focus on the part that says, like, it's equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero, and if x is less than zero. Um, only because, yeah, this part right here, the part that I'm talking about is this part right here, where, this part, where they say, um, where they say, where they say that, um, that it's equal to the absolute value of x such that x, like, you know, it's equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero and negative x if x is less than zero. Um, we'll go through, we'll go through, um, piecewise functions later. The thing that we should focus on is just, you know, the basics of um, absolute value functions. And what I mean by that is the fact that, you know, it has h comma k as its vertex. And also um, that a right here, this is the slope where it says right here a is the slope and then this is the vertex both of these are you know hk it's the vertex and um h so the vertex one thing that i forgot to go through is that the vertex is um The vertex is basically, it's always going to be the midpoint right here. That is going to be your vertex. Um, I, don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure they say it here, but, you know, just to add on to that. 
um, that's what that's what it would be. So now that we know how to do so, now we can go get it, we can go ahead and get started on graphing absolute value equations. And I know that kind of that intro kind of took long, um, but you know I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows what how to do you know the basics of absolute value functions. And if you don't really know a lot, you know. You can always do research and, um, but that's why I kind of, you know, I had to go through that because it's something that should be covered. Um, but let's look at the first one. So we have y equals x, the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 4. So if we look at it, we already have it in vertex form. Um, I'm sure if this was a plus, it would be different because then we would have to say minus negative something, but it's already an, a minus here. So we don't really have to, we have to kind of ignore, you know, we don't have to really do anything with that part. So we know that our vertex our vertex is 2, 4. So it's right here. And one of the things that um, we have to keep in mind is the fact that it's going to be in this form because your right here where your um, your invisible one should be it's basically like saying 1 times the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 4 but um, that's why I put a, a 1 there because, you know, it's a slope of 1. This is going to be the slope. So now we can go ahead and, if, we, if you remember how to graph linear equations, you basically go up 1 and right 1, so like this. But there's also like a catch to this. Because it is a, um, you know, because it is a, a absolute value function, you have to look at the reflection. So this is kind of, I don't think they do this in like your algebra classes, but you can draw like a line right here. And you can see, okay, this is kind of like a mirror reflection of this side. So um, this one, you can go, you can go left one and then go left one again because it's the reflection of it. And this one, you go one two, and then you go one two. So then you have something that looks like this. And there you go, you graphed it. So that's kind of how I would do it. Um, and let's see. Oh wait, never mind. It's two. It's two comma negative four. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So it should be like this. So again, it's the same thing, but you know, you have a slope of one right here. And 
image, you can draw your line like this, and then you can just look at their mirror reflection. So it would be one going left one and then left one again, and draw like a line right here to represent like the reflection. Um, if you reflect here, you reflect this point, so it'd be one, two, and then it'd be one, two. And then this one would be one, two, three, one, two, three. And this one would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So, and you can keep going, of course. Um, if you see there, if you see the, um, kind of the rate of change here, you see that it's going one, 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 one. So it's like going up one and left one, up one and left one, up one and left one. So you can go ahead and finish it off like that. Um, and draw the rest of the line here. So that's how you do the first one. And there, you graphed it. So, um, forgive me for that little, for that little, um, mistake there. If we look at number two, we have, so this one is, this one's kind of interesting. So, this one, it's of course, A is greater than zero, so it's gonna be up, facing up. Um, however, there's no, there is no, um, you know, there's no number here like we had in the other one, um, and this should be negative four. So, um, but don't get confused by that. We can just put a plus zero right there. So... Basically, every time that you have just this, you can always just put a plus zero. Because it's really important that you complete your equation. That way you know where your vertex is and you're not just looking at this part or what's what's written or what you have. Um, always make sure that your equations are in the form y equals a times x minus h plus k. Not, not, basically not this right here. So, um, that's why you have to be careful. So, for this one, we have, and if we look at the plus one, it's not really in this form. So, we can go ahead and look at it. It's basically like saying x minus negative 1 plus 0. So do not be fooled by this positive 1. It's not positive. It's it's not... The vertex is not 1 comma 0. It's actually negative 1, 0. So you can go ahead and point that over here. Plot that over here. So, you see that the, um, there's also an invisible one right here because, you know, it's, basically that's the, that's the slope that we're working with. Um, if we look at the, the slope, it's going up one and right one. So it's rising one and, and going to the right one. And then we go one, one, and then one, 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 and then we finish it off. So this one, we go ahead and do A line over here and then if we look at the again the reflection part 
we can go ahead and see this is going to be like a line right here we can draw our little line um And we can say that if this is a reflection over here, and it goes one, two, and then one, two, and then over here it's one, two, three, one, two, three, and over here it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then over here it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And I would go a bit further with this one, but because it's no, there's no, um, there's no space anymore, we can just go ahead and stop there. So we have, basically that's how it would be done. Um, and then let's see so then that's how you do that one for the for this one um this one is kind of interesting um this one is basically saying we again we go ahead and we go ahead and turn it into the vertex form that it really is so it's one times the quantity x minus zero plus one so the vertex because it's a zero it doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative it's going to be the the x the x um coordinate is going to be zero and the y coordinate because it's a plus k it's going to be a, a positive one so your your vertex is going to be zero comma one for this one so we can go ahead and We can go ahead and um, get started with this one. So we, again, it's a slope of one. So we have going up one and right one, and then up one and right one, up one and right one, up one and right one, up one and right one. And then we go ahead and make our line over here. And then over here, it's basically a reflection if we draw our, our line, even though there's already a line drawn, you want to make sure to, to emphasize that this is a line that, it's the line of reflection. So we have, this one is a reflection, it's reflecting basically across the y-axis. But of course, um, if it's if it's let's say it's over here, it would be reflecting across this line. But basically, it's reflecting across the y-axis in this problem. So we have one, one, and then we have one, two, one, two, and then we have one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So this part, you can go ahead and trace. And that's how you would draw the absolute value function. <laughs> Um, if we look at this one,
we have we have Sorry, guys, give me a second. Um...